Oh, one second. Oh, good evening. Good evening. I was in the middle of something then. All right. So, um, yeah, Sunday evening. Um, I've just been finished watching in what just finished watching. I'm so excited. I can't even really speak <laughs> the Carabao Cup final. Now I, as you know, I'm a United fan. So first trophy in six years get in. Um, and so, yeah, look, we're just going to spend a little bit of time this evening, not talk about football. All right. I'm going to ask, answer some questions, uh, in relation to whatever you guys want to ask me really. So really the floor is yours to take. And, um, if there are questions, I managed to find a workaround for one of my tools, which I will be able to um, utilize for the first time. It feels like in like six months. So um, yeah, but anyway, welcome guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Please do let me know if you can hear me. I have tested this a little bit earlier on. It should be all good, but please do put a one in the comments if you can hear me. That would be greatly appreciated. Just means that I can uh, be confident that I'm not just rambling to myself um, for no reason whatsoever. I just need to pull up another pane here very quickly. Um, bear me one second while I do this. Um, okay, that's good. I've got that on the side. All right. Okay, cool. All right. So, guys, questions. Anything that you like, um, you can ask. Um, anything from... Thank you, thank you, Penguin. Thank you, Alex. Um, you can hear me. Uh, anything that you might have seen in, in the news or any situations you might be facing right now, as always, I will always um, try to give you the um, answers that you need um, and give you as much value as you need. Obviously, in providing the answer doesn't mean that, you know, it is the 100% correct answer for you. That isn't the case a lot of the time. So, but I, I will try to obviously give you an answer that will allow you to kind of move forward with how you're going to make a decision on how you might approach something, how you might broach something. Um, but like I said, it may not be the 100% exact thing that you should go off and do. Um, for those people who are going to read this on, um, who are going to watch this, I cannot speak. For those of you who are going to watch this on replay, I had this in the post today, uh, yesterday, um, which is the first copy of my book. Honestly, it just doesn't feel, it hasn't felt real until now. And um, I do need to talk a little bit about how this came about because I had the option to do this as an audio version only and I was offered quite a lot of money for it. I chose not to because I wanted this physical copy, like something that you can go pick up in your Asda, in your local Tesco, Tesco's, in your local water, Waterstones. And... Um, I can't quite believe that it's it's in my hand. And um, I, you know what I feel like? I feel like I've left a little piece of me behind. My, regardless of what happens moving forward, this will always be here after I'm gone. And it will be my little, my little mark that I was here. And um, I'm so happy to have received this. It was actually a little emotional as well, to be honest. Um, and I can't believe it's going to be out to the world in just over a little over two weeks. And so thank you to everyone who has already pre-ordered the book. Um, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I will leave a QR code just in the corner here. If you are watching this on replay and you do want to go pick it up, you can literally hit uh, the QR code uh, actually right here in this corner right there. Okay. Anyway, all right, let's see what questions you have um, and we can get stuck in to your questions. Um, to be honest, I've not paid a lot of attention to the news this week. I've had so much going on. Um, it's really, 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 really been busy. Um, so let's see what you guys come up with in terms of questions. Um, I do have... Um, a couple of other bits and pieces coming out this week. People have been asking me an update as to what happened with my car and whether it got written off or whether I've basically gone off and bought something something new. Um, I'm going to have an update for that on Tuesday, actually, um, because yeah, the, the the two choices that were that I was confronted with. No, nah, they just, they, they made no sense. I didn't want to indulge in either of them um, because 
the thought of them would just well the thought and the reality thank you so much to whoever just ordered the book thank you very very much the reality of the choices and what they actually meant was just way too pa painful it just wasn't palatable to me at all so on in the video on tuesday you'll find out what i've done with my car and the decision that i've made and i i hope that it challenges people to to think about um the decision that they might have made in that kind of situation as well because the reality is that when you when you look at you know cars and cars that we finance as a nation we we fund 20 billion pound worth of cars every year that's that's used brand uh, sorry brand new cars we fund 20 billion pounds worth of brand new cars every single year we use uh, we spend 22 billion pounds on finance on used cars every single year. Guys, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. There's two more orders. So three orders of the book now. Thank you so much. So I don't know if I've actually said this on the channel or not, but what we're going for, and you may come across more, um, you may come across some of the social um, bits that I've got going on at the moment. But what we're looking to do is we're trying to get this onto the Sunday Times bestseller. Now, that is a very, very tall order. In order for that to happen, we need 3,000 copies of this physical book being sold, well, pre-ordered or sold the first week of release, which is March the 16th, so pre-orders and sales that first week. We need 3,000 of them for them to be in with a chance to be on the Sunday Times bestseller. Um, you may think that 3,000 people is not a lot, you know, 3,000 copies are not a lot, but I'm I'm told reliably that most publishers, most authors, sorry, who are way bigger than me in terms of profile, who may be mini celebrities or so, they don't sell a 1,000 copies their first week. And so it is a very, 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 very tall order, but it's one that I am absolutely gunning for. Um, I, I don't, for one minute, believe that because I have 40,000 subscribers on YouTube that this is going to be a doddle. Actually, when I think about the number of people who see my videos from um, obviously the subscribers list, that number is very, very small. You can see that in my video view. So if in, even if you have a thousand people watch a video, a thousand people watch this in replay, even if you were to have a 10% um, conversion on a thousand, that's very, very lucky. Oftentimes the conversion rates are 0 0.01, 0 0.1% of, of views or whatever, of whoever sees your thing. So, you know, there we go. It's a tall order, but, you know, me being me, this may be the only book that I write. And so it took a lot of hard work. I was so stressed. I was ill um, in the process of writing this book. And it is my it's my little legacy that I've left here and call it selfishly or not. But when I think back over my journey, one thing that I want to have in my bio is the kid who was fostered, who was homeless to a Sunday Times bestseller or a bestseller of some kind. I think that not only will it inspire kids who are younger than me, who are coming behind me, but it will also give people a push to really go after what they wanted. I mean, let's not forget this right here started with this channel. It started with the first video in 2020. It started with the first podcast in 2020. Everything has, has happened because of this channel and because of you guys watching. And um, I have to pinch myself all the time to just take a minute. Just take a minute and let it all sink in. Like this is with Harper Collins, the second largest book publisher in the world. For a kid who was homeless, who was sleeping on the streets, who was fostered, this kind of stuff doesn't happen. And so I'm so thankful to be here. And I want to say thank you to everyone who's ordered and, and to the five of you who have ordered the book using that QR code. Anyway, right, let's get to the comments. Because I know Ivan, Ivan, what you're saying? Let's have a look at Ivan's uh, question here. Oh, I'm on the wrong pane. <clears throat> Carly, how you doing? Right, Ivan is saying, um, is starting a few regular savers in the new financial year this April will be effective way to pay out. Oh, look, I just need to increase my pain here. Right, sorry, one second. It's starting a few financial uh, regular savers in the new financial year this April that will be effectively pay out in financial year 2024. Good way to maximize savings by drip feeding from an ISA or easy access uh, saver. Okay. Um, 
to try and make sense of this, would it be effective way for the financial year? Okay, so I think it's it, okay. Right, so I can use this actually, which is great. Yeah, uh, I managed to find a workaround for this bad boy. So let me just do a little bit of an explainer, mate, because I think um, you've the the premise of your idea is solid, right? And I'm not going to put myself on the spot and do the mathematics here. Thank you again for that person who has just ordered um, another book as well. Right. So what you're asking, you're asking about, it does work. There we go. All right. You're asking about regular saver, right? And if you're doing a regular saver, so let's just say you had a 7% regular saver and you're going to be in this account one month for 12 months because most regular savers have a, have a term of 12 months to it, right? So the thing you need to understand with a regular saver is whilst the 7% rate is actually quite attractive, you're not getting the full 7% rate for all of your deposits over the 12 month period. In fact, actually what you need to do is you need to transverse these. So 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We'll make it fit. We'll make it fit. Because when you start to make your contribution, let's just say you're going to put in, you know, 100 quid here in month one, which will be January, that's going to get your full 7%, right? Because it's in for 12 months, right? But as you keep making your contributions through February, and you start making your contributions through March, well, guess what? That's going to be in for the full 12 months. This is going to be in for 11, 10, nine, eight, until you get to the point where actually your last installment, which will be in the December here for a hundred pounds, for example, is only going to get a proportion of the 7%. So what you need to try and do is you need to understand that actually the 7% headline rate isn't what you're going to get on all of your contributions, basically, because it doesn't work like that. So it could be an effective way for you to have money saved into a number of accounts that you can then take out at a better interest rate. But I would argue that in a post to going for this, and again, don't put me on the spot to do the, to do the mass for you, apologies. But um, in a post to doing this, what I would do is I would suggest looking for a rate that gives you a consistent 3% during your 12 months that for me would be the better solution. So I don't know what this works out when you do the the proportionality to it. I just, I couldn't tell you if I'm completely honest. Um, but if it works out at say 4%, you know that you're, you're looking at this as a benchmark, right? As when you average out the the reduction of the proportionality of the 7% that you'll get over the 12 month period, you'll be, look, you'll be better going for a headline uh, rate to get the best out of your savings, if that makes any sense. Cool. All right. Um, thank, look, guys, you guys are killing it. Thank you so much. There are 10 orders of that book now. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, let's have a look and see what else we've got. Ivan, thank you, mate. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Carly, um, need to find some cash um, to get a ULS compliant car ready for the August expansion. Would rather have a crappy banger than something on finance. You know what, Carly? <laughs> oh, my God. I don't want to give away the content of the video on Tuesday, right? But the ULES expansion, I mean, I've, I've got, I drive an electric, so I don't really have the, the worry of having to pay for congestion charge or anything like that. I mean, I'm sure it's going to change at some point. Um, but for the past seven years of having the car, I've not paid it at all. And as that, as that zone keeps expanding, it's just going to literally encapsulate and capture more people who aren't within the, uh, emissions um want emissions compliant it's a bit of a it's a bit of a sticker really to be honest but i was in exactly the same position as you the thought of taking out finance was i didn't want to do it and i didn't want to you know use a chunk of money that i'd accumulated either i don't mm -mm, i didn't want to do that so um you'll have to find out on tuesday what what i've ended up doing but just no i'm i'm it's not happening. I just didn't want to do it. It's just the, it just, I wasn't going to do it. And I, I really got to the point where I was like, oh. either I take out finance or I use a load of cash. And the only the thing that kept, kept running through my mind was I could invest it. 
I could put it into property. Those were the two things that kept going through my mind. So yeah, I feel your pain, mate. I feel your pain. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are killing it. The, you guys are killing it. 12 of you at the moment. Thank you very, very much. All right. Where can I find your podcast? Also, I need to be out of the market out of the market for three to five years due to paying off mortgage as quickly as possible. But I miss being invested so badly. Any advice on how to balance? Okay, cool. So um, the podcast is on Spotify. It's on Apple. If you literally type in the Conversation on Money podcast on Google, you'll find it right there. Um, but Spotify is probably the, the most common player that most people will have it on. Apple is the second, but it's on all of the good podcast outlets, essentially. I'm not going to have an episode for the podcast tomorrow. I'm taking a bit of a break this week. Um, so no podcast tomorrow, but typically it's every Monday, 6 a.m. that it goes out. And this year I'm bringing on more guests to talk about things that are on the periphery of money. And you'll see that in the last two episodes where we were talking mainly mindset psychology more than anything else. So, um, yeah. In terms of be not being invested for three to five years to pay off the mortgage, um, look, this is where mindset basically comes in, right? And let me just run through. Maybe I can give you a way to think about it maybe a little bit differently. And if you do order the book, by the way, you actually, I will actually, I actually ask you in the book to go through this exercise with me. Okay. I won't describe the full exercise that's in the book, but I'll take you through a version of it either way. All right. So for you, you're going to be out of the market for three to five years. Okay. I'm just going to put five years on here. Okay. You're going to be out of the market. Now your goal is, I assume your goal is to be mortgage free. This is a massive, massive goal. Now, if you're worried about, okay, well, you've got this period of time where there's no market investment, right? So no investment, no returns, and you probably have that going on. So you've got a real fear that you might miss out on market returns whilst you're not invested in the market. This, let me just put a red line through this, is irrelevant. Because you don't know what's going to happen in the markets during the five years that you're going to be out. But what you do know for certain is, you know what the outcome of this is going to be. Okay, so let's get down into the numbers. Let's consider how much of a mortgage you're paying off. Okay, maybe that's a large, maybe 50k, okay. Maybe this is the amount that you're actually going to pay off during that three to five year period, right? But actually, that's not even the price. That is not the price at all. The bigger prize is the value of your house. That's that's the big prize because if you're if you've got a house that's worth say three hundred k, you now in a three uh, in a five year period have basically acquired an asset worth worth three hundred k. And I think that's how you should really think about it from a mindset point of view. What happens here is irrelevant. We don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what's going to happen. So don't dwell on that. Don't dwell on the fear that you might miss out on some market growth. What you should be focusing on is what you're going to gain. You're going to gain the asset of market value, the roof over your head. The bigger thing that you're going to gain here. It's peace of mind. Imagine how much better you're going to sleep knowing that you no longer have a mortgage. And let me flip that even further, right? Think about the freedom that's going to give you moving forward. So when you, when you circle back and you say, well, actually... Your investment, your FOMA that you're feeling right now, once this is paid off and you have the freedom... You can double down. You can 2x. You can 3x amount you were investing in the first place and really start to take advantage of markets and market volatility in the time you have left. So I would I would I would think about it very, very differently. Forget this. It doesn't matter. We don't have a crystal ball. But we do know that you're going to be mortgage free. We know that for sure. And in and in doing so, not only are you going to 100 percent own your asset, 
you're going to get peace of mind. It's going to give you freedom and it's going to give you the ability to double, double what you invest in, triple what you invest in. You're going to have a completely different like outlook to life completely, completely by the time your mortgage is paid off in three years time. So I would consider it that, mo- that way, mate. That's how I would look at it personally. But yeah, hopefully that's, that's helpful. Walter, um, Walters is asking here, with the number of orders you need, would pre-orders um, from iTunes audiobooks count towards it, or is it just physical copies? I can't decide which to get. Okay, so this is the bit that's really annoying. So I had a good conversation with Harper Collins about this. Pre-orders for the book, for them to count towards Sunday Times bestseller, it's only the physical book that counts. It is so, so, so annoying. So I had the opportunity to do an audiobook only. Because obviously I have a podcast, I do YouTube, and a lot of the time, because it's kind of like new media, an audiobook was more attractive. But with HarperCollins, it gave me the option to have a physical copy and do an audiobook and do an ebook. So it comes in three formats. But for the Sunday Times bestseller specifically, it has to be 3,000 physical books. And that's annoying. But unfortunately, I have no control over that. So yeah, it's physical books, mate. Um, unfortunately. All right, let me just clear my board. One second. Let me just clear my board. We get onto another question here. Are there any other United supporters on the uh, on the live this evening, by the way? There must be one or two of you or so on here. How are you feeling is the question I'm going to ask. Are you feeling the way I feel? I just, I don't know. I feel just, it's very, very weird. You think it's football and it's inconsequential, but... Actually, you know what? I just feel elated. I feel I feel uplifted. Like, it's football. I just think Ten Hag's done such a great job. Um, and it's nice to see the players actually perform. Well, they didn't perform too well today, but that cohesiveness in the team is just absolutely mad. So, yeah. Uh, mate, thank you so much for this. Uh, Dean, really do appreciate it, mate. And um, look, one thing I would ask as well, you know, when you when you do get your copies of the book, please write a review. Um, that really helps with Amazon uh, rankings and stuff like that. And I would generally, I would generally, generally, generally love to know what you guys thought of it as well. You know, in this book, I actually share a lot of my own personal story and through the principles that we go through. So it's called The Money Basics. But basic is a formula. So I created um, the basic formula because I wanted it to be very, very simple, something that people could follow, something that is sequential, but actually practical. So in this book, there are about four tasks that I ask people to go through. And those tasks we reference back to throughout the book because it's practical as well. It's not just me waxing lyrical. I talk a lot about my own personal experiences, how I've struggled myself, how I came to rectify and reconcile some of the struggles that got me to the point where I feel financially stable now, where I have choice, where I have a little bit of freedom. Um, I explain all of this in the book and the, and the, and the, the formula is designed to take you on the journey or a similar journey to get into the point where I'm at right now. So I would, again, please leave a review because I would love to know what your thoughts are um, when you do receive it. Uh, Monza UK FinTech Bank is currently looking for an exit via IPO route and Revolt is still seeking to acquire its license for more than two years. Your thoughts? Well, I can talk about the licenses. I mean, look, licenses by the FCA are just an absolute, they're they're really hard to come by. I mean, if you think about it, though, Monzo and, uh, well, Revolut specifically has got millions behind them. I mean, we've been trying to get our license from the FCA for a very, very long time for um, Eureka, which I was part of. And we were part of, um, we were, we were an appointed representative of a, of a company which allowed us to trade, but we quickly found out that because we had to step through compliance hoops with this company that we were appointed representatives of, we were just prevented from doing any marketing, anything at all, because, well, we're using their license. And so you go directly to the FCA for their life for a license. And it's a, it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. I'm surprised that Revolut are still trying to acquire 
um, a license. You would think that they already, well, they will have one for sure, but they probably want a specific license for a specific set of things that they want to do. Um, but the process is long. It's very, very long. The FCA is understaffed. Um, they're behind on everything. It's just a nightmare. And um, Monzo, they're, they're currently looking for an exit via an IPO route. Um, Monzo had a lot of issues, mate. I mean, the the founder of, is it Monzo? I'm sure it's the founder of Monzo. The guy who actually came up with the idea, he ended up being pushed out by you know his investors because they felt, Maybe there was a difference in the direction of the business. You know, working in these spaces is very, 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 very difficult. And the reason why it's difficult is because a lot of the time it is very, very hard for a fintech bank to make profit if they don't actually have a product or service that they're actually selling. Um, and this is one of the things that I guess a lot of people don't don't ne necessarily appreciate. Um, it's hard to run a company you know there are lots of 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 fintech startups that are not still not profitable after so many years and so many millions of customers not profitable not making any money at all because now in a, in in the financial space there's this expectance that either it's got to be free or it's got to be extremely low cost and for a lot of these fintechs, they're taking on millions and billions of pounds in, of investor money to get them going. There has to be a return somewhere down the the, the chain of value. Um, and that's that's difficult for a lot of people. So I don't think that Monta, I don't, I, I'm very, very rare that I don't, I don't think the Monta would go bust or anything like that. But I think they just probably need to restructure a little bit, I, I would say, is probably what they're trying to do. Is there a way of set of maximizing your savings allowance of one thousand um, pounds? There is no trick behind it, mate. I mean, ideally, I mean, your savings and your per that's your personal savings allowance of one thousand pounds. You need to have an equivalent amount of money in a savings account, drawing an appropriate rate of return to get to your one thousand um, pounds. So there is no way of maximizing. You need capital or the best rate available, or a combination of the two. That's what you essentially need, mate. Um, but with a low interest rate environment, well, I say low interest rates are going up. Um, the reality is not a lot of people are going to hit that, that thousand pound mark unless you have large amounts of capital. Uh, can you, or can you rank these in order of tax efficiency? Okay. Um, these are all very different things, mate. So they're all very, very different things. And it's not just about, you need to have a little bit more detail on these, right? So effectively what you're asking for, let's do a little bit of an explainer really. Right. Okay. So your pension, you can contribute 40,000 pounds per year, but obviously this is tied to your earnings, right? So if you're earning 20K, you can't go and pay him 40K. It's impossible. You can't do it. So it's tied to your earnings 40K. Um, within this, you're also going to get tax relief added to your contributions. And you're also going to get what we call tax-free cash, which is 25% of your pot. So if you have £100,000 in your lifetime accumulated in a pension, you can take 25% of that, a quarter of that completely tax-free, at the point at which you start to take an income, all right? So those are the key things within this one. Within your ISA, there is no limit, but it is completely tax-free, okay? So obviously within this here, this is subject to income tax when you start to take an income, your pension. So worthwhile noting. There is no limit to your ISA. You do have a lifetime allowance uh, of a million pounds for your pension, but no limit to your to your ISA. You can accumulate whatever amount you want unless things change. There is a rumor to say that they were, are going to cap the amount that you put into an ISA up to a million pounds, up to a hundred thousand pounds. That's not law right now. They may or may not do this, but that was a recommendation. So no limit. It's completely tax free. There's no income tax, no CGT, no dividend tax either. Okay, within an ISA. So this is very, very, very tax efficient. In EIS, this right here will basically allow you to reduce your tax. 
tax bill. Now, what's the maximum on, on EISs? I cannot remember off the top of my head the maximum for EISs. These are, you need advice to access this. You cannot access this on your own. You need a financial advisor or some kind of investment house to access this. You just can't go grab it on Hargreaves, Lansdowne or Vanguard. So you need help with this. But essentially what, what this will be used for is, for example, if you're a footballer, and when I was advising, we used to do a little bit of this. If you're a footballer, if you're someone who earns a lot of money, right, you have a massive bonus coming in, you could throw in, say, 100K into an EIS. You have to hold it for, there is a minimum hold. I think it's three years on the EIS. There's EISs and VCTs, basically. Um, it's a venture capitalist trust. So there's two. You've got a minimum hold. But what then happens is that if you're a 45% taxpayer, taxpayer you actually get a check back so this is a very high risk investment there's a lot of risk within this so for a lot of people they may put 100k in understanding that it's a, that it's a high risk investment but they're looking for the tax the tax back that's what they're looking for this right here so the idea is if you hold it for three years are you going to lose 45 percent? probably not you might even make a return on, on it. So these are tax efficient, but you need financial advice. And typically speaking, these only are appropriate once you're at a certain level. I certainly wouldn't be going here before you go here or here first. And remember, people will use uh, an ISA in place of a pension, but I think that, that can be a little bit misguided sometimes because of the technicalities of how a pension basically works. So this should be like, if I had to rank them, this is what you're asking. This would be one for tax efficiency overall, because there's no limit. It's tax free, no income tax, no CGT, no dividend tax. Okay. Then it will be pensions because obviously, th again, this is going to be for retirement purposes only, right? Retirement purposes only. You're going to get tax relief on the way in. You've got tax-free cash at the point when you turn 55 on the current, le current legislation, but you will be paying income tax on the income that you draw. So this is by far the most tax efficient out of the three. I would put this only third because you need help. You need to, you need to seek a financial advice to be able to access one of these. But yeah, hopefully that's, uh, that's helpful. All right, well, sorry, one second. Let me just grab another question. Uh, Dean's just saying here, also opened a chip account with your recommendation and it seems great. After bills, I transfer my everyday savings into it. Oh, good, mate. Look, listen, with that, um, I mean, it's not, it's very, I don't, I'm really, really careful with brands that I kind of work with and stuff like that. And, you know, chip, they want to do something a little bit different with their savings account, which is why I thought actually it will be something a little bit different. And it ties into the fact that actually, what do most people want? If they've got money lying around, they just want it to be able to work as hard as possible for them. And I like what they're doing there within the fact that as the bank rate goes up, as we think it will, um, they're also going to increase the interest rate on the savings account as well. So it's good that you did that, mate. Thanks for letting me know. Cheers, bud. Yeah, so what I would do... Um... Let me see if I can actually grab the link for, see if I can actually grab the link. One second. If I can grab the link, what I'll do is I'll post it um, in the comment section and just go watch the video, mate. There is a, there is a link where you can just go and um, open the account, but the video will give you all the information that you basically need about the account, how it works. When I made the first video on it, it was the highest paying um, instant access account available on the market. I don't think it is anymore. Um, but that's because things change. And obviously, competition is always very, very good uh, to have. But they built it to ensure that they could be as competitive as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab both links to both videos. Um, let me just do this quickly. One second. Uh, all right, copy that link. Right, so this is the first video that I made on CHIP. This was when um, they were the highest instant access account on the market. 
Um, and then I recently did another video. It wasn't about that specifically, but it was about, um, where was it? Which one did I do it in? I think it was this one. I was talking about something. Yeah, it was this one right here. So I also grabbed this link as well. Uh, in that video, I was talking about uh, financial stress and mental health, because that's something that I'm really, really interested in as well. And in this video, you have some codes which you can use, which means that if you get a bonus, basically, if you use the link, um, so if you deposit a certain amount, they give you a bonus on top, but it's there in the video. It's somewhere, uh, if I can find a timestamp for you, I will. Bear me one second. Uh, let me see if I can actually find a timestamp for you. Okay, it's not going to let me do this simply. I have to do this the hard way. Um, the timestamp you need in the second video, you need to go to about six, 5.57 in the second video to get all the details and stuff. But yeah, um, you'll find more information about Chip um, in those two videos, mate. What are my thoughts on the Nigerian presidential election? To be honest, I've not been following it, but I do know that there is, they're trying a cryptocurrency, um, a crypto um, experiment right now, which isn't going down too well at all. And, I, and, and I'm completely honest, I don't know how the government thought it was going to go down well. But having said that, if you're going to try and change financial transactions within a country that has always been a cash economy, you'd have to do it carte blanche, cold turkey. I just don't think it's going to work, though. Um, I just don't think it's going to work. I really, really don't. Um, I've got one of my friends here who was my neighbor in Nigeria, Larry. And we haven't spoken for a few weeks now, but he's following it. And um, it's inter it will be interesting to see what happens. I mean, for the longest time, I think what they need and what we need out there is just a stable government of someone who's going to do the right thing and not be corrupted by corruption if that makes any sense but i can't really give a really in-depth view of it because i've not really followed it that much if i'm completely honest i hope that they get someone who who wants to do the right thing because that's the thing that's been missing for the longest time uh, in that country and, and, and to be honest for for the natural resources available it should be one of the wealthiest countries in the world and you know you if you think more Globally than that, you know, um, China investing in Africa and, you know, other areas of the, of, of, of the continent is problematic. You know, you need to have a lot of those factories, a lot of the skills developed locally in the country. And you want to have a president that sees that vision and has the courage to drive that vision and drive that agenda forward. Because until one of the leaders does it's all going to be exactly the same thing. It's never going to change. And that's just really, really unfortunate. Penguins is asking, isn't a mortgage considered a good debt? What's the reason for paying it off quickly? Um, the mortgage is a good debt. I mean, the reason why someone might decide to pay off a mortgage quickly is so that they can be mortgage free. Um, and what it then does is it allows you to free up other monies or make other decisions about the way you live your life. Look, let's, let's be really, really real. Most of us live, like what's the, what's the most important bill that we have? It's rent or mortgage. Now, if you're renting, what you're doing is you're paying somebody else's mortgage. You're always going to have rent because you have no control over the ownership of the asset itself. So a mortgage puts you in a position where you have that control, but being able to pay off early. And let me see if I can actually just do, again, we use time. I used to use timelines a lot when I was an advisor, right? Let's uh, get this back up. If you think about the fact that the average mortgage is, you know, 35 years at the moment, right? So you take out a mortgage here and let's just say your house is worth a hundred thousand pounds at this point, right? And your mortgage, by the time you come to, end, it might be worth, let's say, £400,000, right? As an asset, yeah? But look, you're, you're making mortgage payments this entire time, right? And for most people, what they will see is they'll see their mortgage payments like flex in 
increase, decrease as they go along. So you've got this kind of like, unless you're able to keep it completely flat, which is sometimes rare depending on what mortgage rates are doing, so on and so forth, but you've got the cost of your monthly expenditure. You've got the cost of the mortgage. So the reason why most people would want to pay off their mortgage early is because if you've taken out your mortgage for a 35-year period, and let's just say this is year 20, and at this point, you're mortgage-free, right? If you were paying £500 per month for your mortgage at this point, you now have 500 quid disposable income, right? Now, some people may decide, right, I'm either going to invest this, I'm going to, I don't know, part-time retire, go traveling, uh, change careers. People will be able to pursue what makes them happy more by paying off their mortgage early. The sense of security that you get around it is just life-changing. Now, I can't, I'm not mortgage free personally. I have a small mortgage for the house that I live in, but I have no other debts whatsoever. I have no car finance, no overdraft, no personal loan, no nothing. I've got no debts whatsoever. I owe nobody a penny. I already feel quite financially secure. Now imagine how I would feel if I didn't even have a mortgage and every penny that I earned was. Because, well, all I need to do when you think about your core expenses will be gas, electric, cancel tax, food. Those are the four things that you have to pay for. Imagine how much freer you're going to feel by doing that. So even though a mortgage is a good debt because the house essentially appreciates in value, it's the, the freedom of paying off your mortgage early and what the financial implications means that is so life-changing for a lot of people. Being able to do what you truly feel, it will fulfill you, give you purpose. Money can't buy that. Money cannot buy that. And I've worked with clients where they just, their life changes. They make different choices. They go traveling. They're able to just, you know, step back, chill. They can invest money into the stock market. They can invest money into a pension. They, Trust me, it's a completely different way of thinking. Your mindset completely changes when, you, when you're mortgage-free. And that's the reason why some people will prefer to, to pay off their mortgage early so they don't have to worry. And by, by the way, all the time that you're mortgage-free, your property is still, still appreciating in value, which is powerful, really, really, really powerful. Um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Uh, Chelsea sadly lost. I know Tottenham as well, man. That's what that's the London derby. Well, one of the London derbies as well. I don't know. You know what it is, right? I think with Chelsea, you spent so much money. You got so many players. I think Graham Potter's got the enviable um, situation where he has to try and figure out how he's going to whittle down that team. You've got way too many pl players, and with so many players, how do you make the selections, right? Because and I think once he gets that right, once he gets that right, I think it will be a completely different ball game. So I think it's kind of maybe just you've got to grin and bear it for the time being, and hopefully he gets it right um, a bit later on. But, you know, football always changes, mate. Unfortunately, it's always swings and roundabouts. I mean, who would have thought that Man City would have bought, of, bought, would have bought Erling Haaland? And it doesn't look like, well, actually, they could still win the Premier League. But it didn't look like they were going to win the Premier League two months ago. You know, Arsenal was so far ahead. And to think that they could potentially not win with a player like Haaland, who's, I don't know how many goals he scored at the moment, what, 31 or something like that? Rashford's uh, following him with, I think, about 23, 23, I think, at the moment. You know, The dude's miles and miles ahead of everyone. And if Man City don't win with that kind of play in the squad, it just tells you that it's football's a wonderful thing. So I think Chelsea will be there, but Graham Potter's, Graham Potter's got a big job to do. Annette, let's have a look. 
Hi Pete, as interest rates are currently good, would you advise the save and then transfer the saved amount with interest into the mortgage at the end of the year or make regular monthly payment, please? Um, good question. All right, okay, so... Hmm. I'm pausing because the, uh, even if you look, approach this from a mathematical point of view, you'd, you would then be working out what your mortgage interest rate is versus the interest rates on your savings account. And I believe that on, if you're in one of the, if you're locked into a mortgage rate of like 1.4% or something like that, then you're probably going to get more on savings for sure. Um, every mortgage will allow you to pay at least 10% of your outstanding mortgage without any penalties. So, you have the flexibility to do that on a regular basis or on a monthly basis. So technically speaking, there's nothing wrong with accumulating that money into a savings account, getting the, the interest and then transferring into your mortgage and paying into your mortgage once a year. There's nothing wrong with that. I can't fault that approach if I'm honest. Um, but it would be very, very different if you've got a high mortgage rate, which I probably I don't think that you would. Um, given where interest rates are currently at this point in time, well, where they have been um, historically, so yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason why that would be a bad, bad approach. But as always, you know, it, it's also worthwhile, you know, speak to a mortgage provider, speak to a to a lender, um, to one of the lenders, uh, if you're with Nationwide or Halifax or whoever, speak to their mortgage expert and get their views on it as well. Because one thing I don't know is I don't know about your personal circumstances, so there may be a variable in your personal circumstances, which would mean that maybe that wouldn't be the best approach. But on the surface, if you're looking at interest rates, mortgage rates, um, how much you're likely to save, the fact that you've already got 10% anyway, which you could pay without paying a net, overpay without paying a penalty or a repayment charge, on the surface, it doesn't seem like a, like a bad idea. But like I said, there may be variables that potentially could, potentially could um, mean that that isn't, that isn't the case. Mate, you know what? Newcastle have done, they've done really, really well. I mean, Eddie Howell's done great as well, to be honest. I just think, I think one thing that United have had in their favour is the fact that we've got we've got quite a lot of momentum. Whilst we've had a lot of games, the the, the players have got into that rhythm. Like, they, they've been playing, for, and the rotation, the squad rotation that um, Ten Hag has, has been able to implement as well has been amazing. But people like Casimero, have been an absolute godsend um, to the team this year. Like, they really, really have. And Rashford. I mean, it's the way he's changed it has been amazing. But, you know, Newcastle, Eddie Howe's done amazing, mate. And just, you guys haven't even bought any any quality, any real, like, superstar names just yet. And you have a lot of money available to you. So, dude, you guys are going to be a threat next year. I, I, I did the one pause because I'm thinking of, of Liverpool, but mm, they're not really doing bits right now, to be honest. Um, and I think they've got way, way bigger problems over there. Um, and things can change very quickly in football. Hey, dude. No, no, thank you for this. I hope you're rocking and rolling. Hope you're looking after your health after last week. Uh, be down with work as I myself, hoping you have not been as foolish as me. Trust me. So over the past two weeks, I've been a little bit more mindful of getting more sleep. Um, and that's been one of my big, big priorities. Um, the sad reality is I already know that my publish, my, my pub week for the book, publishing week for the book is mad. It's mad. It's crazy. So um, that week, I've got a lot of traveling. Um, I'm going to be all over the place. I've got to make how I'm going to commute to all these places. Yeah, I don't know. I literally have to on the so on the Wednesday, I've got to be in Brighton. Then I've got to be on. Um, so on the Wednesday, I, I'm going to be in Brighton. On Thursday, I've got my regular um, slot on Steph Pack Lunch on Channel 4. But in opposed to us doing the clinic, they say they're going to interview me about the book and we're going to talk about the book. So I've got to get from Brighton to Leeds for the Thursday morning. And then on the Friday, I've got a load of like radio back-to-back -back stuff. 
um, and I've got some other TV and media stuff going in on the Monday and the Tuesday. So publication week is going to be absolutely crazy. I'm just trying to take it easy up until that point and try and get as much downtime as I can because I know that week is just going to be nuts. But I'm trying to look after myself. I'm trying to be take more of a, uh, a more proactive approach to making sure that I sleep well. And, and you should too as well, mate. It's I know how it gets though. You you kind of get into autopilot and you just you just go. But yeah, I mean having to go to hospital with with uh chest pains last year that was not fun at all because your mind starts playing playing tricks on you mate it's like all right if uh, do you have a problem that you should really be uh concerned about here um and it's not good and i think having that in the back of your mind also doesn't help sometimes because then you start to notice all these little niggles more and more and more and more and um yeah it just puts you in a bad place it's certainly it's something that i've been very very aware of and to the point where now I've got you know an Apple watch to try and track steps and help me be a little bit more active to to balance things off but yeah Adama there we go there we go uh, you know I, I I'm gonna watch um uh, match of the day today it'll be interesting to get on the uh, the MU app as well just to see some of the uh, reactions coming out of Old Trafford as well but we'll bask in that a bit later on Uh, or shove them. Oh, yeah, this is a good shout. Or shove them in premium bonds. You could do. I mean, with premium bonds, the only thing you got to remember is, is you're at the mercy of the draw, aren't you? But it is still tax free. It is still tax free, which is good. But if you get lucky though and get you know a couple of fifty quid there or two hundred and fifty quid or or you know God willing the million pound draw, then all of a sudden you you could be really at the races. Uh, the weekend has been, what did I do yesterday? So I've got um, my partner's mom's over at the moment. So uh, my partner's Polish and um, I promised her, her her nephews that I was going to send over my PS4 uh, when they last came here beginning of, the, no, last year, just towards the end of summer. They came in the end of summer. We spent time on the PlayStation. I said, I'll give you this to you when I get a PS5. So because her mom's over now, um, I was like, okay, I haven't accepted on the PS4 yet. So I got a PS5 over the weekend. It arrived yesterday. And yeah, I've been um, playing around on that. Just chilling out, really. I didn't do any work yesterday because that's my one thing. I want to try and make sure I get Saturdays to myself. Sundays are prep day for the week. Podcast, uh, video prepping, editing, that kind of stuff. Um, if I'm prepping for a packed lunch the following week, I would do normally do some of that. I do some admin stuff on a Sunday. So today's been work. Yesterday was ch was chill which was nice. And we had lunch as well, because like I said, the book actually arrived on Friday. So we had a little bit of a celebratory uh, lunch uh, yesterday afternoon, which was very, very nice indeed. Cheers, mate. Thanks for asking. Hey, dude, how you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, good question here. Does the 40k uh, include tax relief? No, it doesn't. So pension contributions. So those that's how much you can contribute to the pension 40,000 pounds does not include tax relief. Where would you recommend putting money uh, for future house, maybe two to five years into stocks or shares or somewhere like chip account? All right, let's go through this. I get this a lot. Um, look, I completely and utterly understand people's enthusiasm to want to put their house deposit and invest their house deposit. But let's go over some of the basics that are absolutely crucial when it comes to investing, okay? When you look at something, what we call timeline, okay? I cover this in the book into more detail. You should have at least a five-year timeline theory, a timeline towards your goal. So unless you are looking to buy your house in five years, plus not five years not five years dead on five years plus so you're going beyond five years then investing in the stock market is just way too risky why because if we fall into a recession and let's just say the markets do this and you put in your deposit money here you could still be at the five-year mark and still be down and if say you put 10K in here and it's worth, I don't know, I know this isn't 
purely representative because I've gone below the line. So that suggests going to zero. But let's just say your work, it's now worth, I don't know, 5K. You've just lo lost half your deposit. It doesn't make any sense. So really, you should not be looking to invest your house deposit unless you're investing for five years plus. The risk is way too, way too big. So what I would generally suggest to people to have a look at is, look, you've got your lifetime ISAs, okay? So you can put 4K in. You're going to get £1,000 free from the government to help towards your house deposit. That's a 25% guaranteed, guaranteed return if you want to look at it in that way. The stock market isn't going to get you that without you having to take this risk, unfortunately. Now, it could it could work out that you put your money in, yeah, and it goes this way. Happy days. But it's a 50-50 chance, mate. So do you, the question is, do you want to invest your house deposit with a 50-50 chance that it might be okay, that it might not? I personally wouldn't be of that way of thinking. So I think things like this are probably the first port of call first and foremost. And then you start to have a look at things like, you know, your chip account, you need to be thinking about tax efficiency, really, you want to make sure that you're keeping things tax free. I mean, yes, you do have your personal savings allowance of 1000 pounds. But what if they change that? What if they re reduce that down to 500 pounds? So really, ISIS should be the first port of call that you go down. Because really, Tax efficiency is king. It's the first rule of financial planning. So once you've put all of everything you, that you can into ISAs and you've got 20,000 pound limit there, obviously 4,000 of that is your lifetime ISA, then start to have a look at other traditional savings accounts. You could have a look at premium bonds after your ISA because they're tax-free. And whilst it is a draw that you're... Let me just get rid of that because I'll just conscious that you can't see what I've just written there. Um, whilst it is a monthly draw, you might still will something, win something. So that's what I'll be looking at first. But please just be mindful. It's a 50-50 chance if you do this. The question is, do you want to take a 50-50 punt? All right, let's get rid of this one. <clears throat> Yeah, someone, yeah. So another thing with the lifetime ISA is you have to be under 40 for a lifetime ISA. So I'm assuming that you are under 40, by the way. If you're not, then unfortunately you won't be able to do a lifetime ISA. But ISAs generally would still be the first vehicle to possibly have a look at alongside premium bonds or anything else that you could find that will give you a tax free um, <clears throat> environment. Mm, very, very nice. I've saved up to 24000 so far. Will I be taxed on this? Depends where you've got the money, mate. Depends where you're holding the money. Uh, if you're holding it in a normal account, then yes, you will be taxed on it. Um, although, even with interest rates at the moment, your, your returns probably won't be that great. Um, and you still got your personal savings allowance to utilize. But yeah, it will be taxable if it's not in an ISA. If it is in an ISA, then you don't have to worry. If it's not in a premium bond, you'll have to worry. If it's in a premium bond, you don't have to worry. Depends what kind of account you have it in, generally speaking. So far this financial year. Dude, your savings rate is mad. Well done, dude. Okay, well done. And you got the new... Um, Okay, so you've maxed out your ISIS. You've maxed out your ISIS, which is great. So, okay, okay. so hopefully you've got £20,000 in your ISIS. You've got £4,000. Okay, look, so let me just draw this really quickly for you because this is something we would always tend to do, right? So what you've been able to do, if you've got 24 k if you've saved up £24,000, you'll know 20, 20K of that can go in your ISIS. Now, you're going to have 4K left over. Now, this, this can just go into a normal account, any account. It could go into instant access. Uh, it could go into a notice account, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But what you want to do is, because you have the tax year running from April the 6th to April the 5th each year, right? Let me just do that one properly. April the 5th each year, right? So we know that the new tax year... The new tax year is starting 
April the 5th, April the 6th, sorry, 2023. So this 4K that you have, you will literally just transfer this into your 2023 ISA. Does that make sense? So, and you're, you're probably not done as well. So I would assume that if you're saving on a monthly basis, you're probably going to end up with a little bit more than 24K. You might end up with maybe 25 or something like that. But whatever the extra amount is, it doesn't matter. Have that go into one of these accounts, uh, into one of these accounts. And then what you then do is you just transfer it into your 2023 ISA. That's the best way for you to, to handle that. Um, because, yeah, I mean, you've got a really good savings rate, mate. So well done. Yes, and if you haven't already, please do smash the like button. There's 23 likes at the moment. There's about 61 of us on here at the minute. So if we can get that up to like 40, 45, that would be absolutely amazing. It just helps the channel, basically. It just helps the channel um, in terms of a little bit of growth. Um, and it just means that the YouTube algorithm will just push it to other people who might also need to see this as well. So I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Let's see what else we've got. Ah, uh, mate, you know what? To be honest, I'm behind on the videos. Where things have been so busy, I've not been able to upload on a regular basis like I used to, you know, every Tuesday and every Friday. Um, so I've had to resort to kind of like live streams to kind of like keep up with the content. I'm, I mean to do more recorded content, but mate, it takes a lot. It's a lot of time planning, filming, editing, and so what you'll notice in some of the, the more recent videos that I am planning, filming and editing, it's me on the go. I'm out somewhere doing something where I'm just going to try and talk about this one thing whilst I'm doing something, um, because it's the only way that I'm going to be able to fit it in. Um, yeah. And I, there's a lot of stuff that I do want to talk about, but at the same time, I don't know that it will be interesting. Like the video on Tuesday, for example, will people really be interested in what's actually happened to my car and why I've decided not to, why I refuse to finance a car and all, well, do people really care? I don't know. Maybe I will be proven wrong and people do care. People are interested to know how I come to financial decisions. I have no idea. Um, but I think that might be something we just test out through the course of the year because Things have been a little bit nuts, mate, to be honest, and I've just struggled to keep up. So, you know, I'm, I'm way behind. I'm probably more behind than you are, to be honest. Nice. I didn't know this. I didn't know this. I didn't know that you were in India. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look, the, the videos on mental health and ADHD and, and, and all that kind of stuff, those are really important topics that sit around the periphery of money. Um, they really, they impact how our decision-making process, how we interface with money. And those things are equally as important as investing in the market. And I want to talk more about those kind of things because I have an, I have a natural interest in them and I'm, I'm actually quite passionate about the whole mental health side, the anxiety, the depression, the being in debt and being bad with money and, and how that stuff affects you. I mean, I talk about it extensively in the book. Um, I've gone through my own battle trying to make sense of it all, trying to make sure that I could get it to work for me. So to be able to be in a position where I can put it into a formula for this book and share some of my experiences a little bit more liberally has been quite it's been quite therapeutic, to be honest, and it's definitely piqued my interest even more into some of those issues. So, yeah. All right, I need to have a little scan of these comments because um, I'm just looking at time right now. Okay, there's, a, there's only a few. I'm going to try and power through uh, the ones that I can find. Uh Okay, I'll watch here. Bonds uh, performed extremely poorly in 2022. What's your thoughts on the 60-40 portfolio? Are there benefits investing into bonds? Would you rather high-yield corporate bonds or normal gilts? Um, <clears throat> really good question, actually. I think, look, bonds, generally speaking, they can be your... They can be a source of growth for sure, um, but they're not going to be your main source of growth. 
Now, if you ask me whether I would prefer corporate or government, like guilt, for example, then you have to consider what kind of, because like, right, let me just draw this actually. So when you think of bonds, right, you've got corporate, oh, can't write, you've got corporate and you've got government bonds, okay? So over here, this will be the UK, the US, China, I don't know, whoever, whatever governments are looking to raise money. On this side, it's, it's pretty safe. I mean, the UK government has never defaulted on, 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 on its debt. Um, the US government hasn't into my collection at all. Um, and so they're pretty, I wouldn't say safe, but they are pretty, well, they are, they are a little bit secure, right? Over here, these are companies that you're, that you're lending money to. And, th and this is exactly what a bond is. It's an IOU. So you're lending money to a company. Now, within this arena, you have different types of companies. So you might have AAA companies. You might have AA companies. You might have B-plus companies. And all this basically refers to is the company's credit rating. So how sound are they financially? So when you look at a AAA company, this might be uh, Apple, right? Yeah. Apple, I'm using the ticker mark there, it might be uh, Google or Alphabet, right? That's who it might be. So if you're lending to companies like this, then you're not going to get a great offer in return for your IOU or your coupon, for example, because that's what they call it. They tell you, right, if you lend us 10,000 10, pounds, we'll give you a return of 3%. That 3% is the coupon. That's what we call it, right? So these companies, because they're more secure, are not going to offer you a high, a high coupon because they're secure. They're financially secure, right? There's less, well, there's less, there's less risk on your part. Now, if you go to a company that might have like a C, a double C plus or whatever, right? Well, their credit rating isn't as good as this. So what you might find is you might find that this company, X, Y, Z, will offer you a coupon at 6%. Now, if you're looking at this number alone, you're thinking, hey, great, fantastic return. But what if this company doesn't repay because it goes bust? It's very unlikely you're going to have Apple go bust. They're the richest company on the planet. So there are, there are a number of factors that go into the decision of which ones you would actually prefer. Now, I think from an investor's point of view, and I think this will probably be the key point in the question, right? If you're using the likes of Vanguard or someone like that, You know, you're relying on their research to who they've put in their portfolio with 40% being in bonds. They'll be doing all the research. They'll be using the Apples, the Amazons, the Alphabets, whoever, right? Whoever wants to lend money, they'll be using top governments as well. And they might have a mixture of really strong companies and some companies that are offering a better coupon because, again, you're looking to diversify right? You might have a mixture of them all. You've got investment grading, you've got junk bonds. Investment grade bonds are the ones where they are AAA, really good credit rating. Your junk bonds are companies that aren't as financially secure where there's a little bit of a risk. Of, there's a more, more of a risk of de default. That's essentially how they work. So what would I rather? I wouldn't mind both. I would like a mixture of both within a portfolio because it means that you're not just necessarily going after your safe returns. Again, investing is all about speculating, right? But you want to manage your, your risk by diversification. So I wouldn't mind having a little bit of corporate bonds and government guilts, because again, the risk of default varies across the two of them quite significantly. And then within the corporate bond allocation to it, I wouldn't mind actually a small percentage of, of maybe junk bonds, because that will give me a little bit more return as long as they pay back the debt. It's all very well swings around about. And when you get into investment management and you get into, you know, um, creating a portfolio, these are all of the questions that are very, 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 very important. 
the reality is that a lot of retail investors won't necessarily have the information available to them that they will understand adequately to be able to make an informed decision, which is where the likes of financial advisors or investment companies, investment houses, the wealth of eyes, the money boxes, the I don't know, money hubs, whatever of these worlds, that's where they come in because that's their expertise. They go out and actually source something that they think is going to work by the connections and and the skill set that they have. And so I could talk about this all day. It is so in-depth and it's so fascinating and so interesting how it all works that, you know, you you kind of have to know what you're doing and how you're going to, you know, navigate the entire thing. But trust me, if you want to get your head into this kind of stuff to understand it, I would wholeheartedly encourage you to. It's really, 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 really interesting. And it really does give you a different view on the world and, and, and companies and products and just general the economy. It really, really does. Dean's just saying here, try to enjoy your publishing week. Although very busy, remind yourself how amazing it is. I, I am already of that ilk where I, because I'm going to be away for a lot of the week, I, I will probably try to document a lot of it. Um, I'll try to document as much as I can. So I might take uh, along with me kind of like the GoPro or something like that just to document key, p- key pieces because the reality is I may never write another book again. This may be the only book that I write and I'm fully aware that it will come and it will go. That moment will come and go just like that. And I want to remember how it feels. I want to remember how it felt having a book published into the world for the first time. So yeah, that's definitely something. And if I do kind of document it, I will put it on the channel. Again, my reticence with that is that it's not investment. It's not the content that people have come become accustomed to on this channel. And so it, it wreaks havoc with the YouTube algorithm. Um, <laughs> it really, really does that's something that I need to kind of come to terms with myself. Um, and then people who do find the channel might feel, might find that they're confused. Like, hang on a second. We thought we're talking about investments here. Why are we talking about a book? That kind of stuff. Um, I think it's only you guys who have been following for a while that will probably get an understanding of what's going on. Um, but who knows? (laughs) Listen, this is how I know I'm getting really, really bad. So I'm in the car a lot. And I probably shouldn't be saying this, but the amount of times that I've been behind the wheel and I cannot remember the last 20 odd miles that I traveled, literally cannot remember. And moments where I actually catch myself in the slow lane going really, really slow because I'm so, so tired that I just need to get to the next services to get a, get a bit of a nap. It's really, really bad. And I go through cans of like, um, what they call the purple, the, the pink, um, is it monster drink? I go through cans and cans and cans of that whilst driving. Um, it's really, really bad. And, uh, that's why I've been trying to prioritize as much sleep as I can, because that's when you know, that you're really, really tired and you're not, you're not working at at full tilt. Your body just needs rest. Do you have to contribute for 35 years to get a state pension? Yes, you do. You do have to contribute 35 years to get the full state pension. To qualify for state pension, you need 10 years contributions but you want the full state pension because let's face it, state pension isn't great anyway. Um, but you need 35 years for the full state pension. It sounds like a lot, but for most people, they'll make it relatively easy if you're in full-time work. If you're taking breaks in between, then you need to kind of figure out how you're going to go about. The good news is you can actually buy your national insurance contribution years. So national insurance contribution years is what counts. So the amount of years that you pay national insurance contributions for you can make up any lost years if you needed to. But yeah, 35 years for full state pension. Do I think 2024 is a good time to buy a house? Potentially, yes. I mean, I think it will be it will be all about what happens with property prices. That's the main thing. And that's the thing to watch. So what's going to happen with property prices 
through the course of the year. Um, I think we're already down maybe 10% on property prices at the moment. Will it go down any further? So there are a lot of um, factors that will influence that. Interest rates, mortgage rates, um, unemployment is going to impact that. Um, how many defaults we might see when the 1.4 million um, fixed rate mortgages come off their fixed rate and people start going onto higher rates, particularly with energy bills going up, council tax going up, cost of everything going up. So it could be, but I would say just keep an eye on the market. If you're looking to buy, try and get yourself in with a really good agent and just try and pick their brains on what they feel is going to happen uh, moving forward with it. That will be very, very important indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm saying I have uh, 10K of human bonds, haven't won in, in like six months. Yeah. Unfortunately, that can be the truth. And that's probably the only downside that you have with premium bonds, you know. It is a draw at the end of the day, so you you may or may not get drawn. Uh, invest and start when you're young, uh, putting in monthly contributions into various funds that will grow, such as healthcare, uh, green energy, AI, forgot about them, and ignore the noise. Indeed, it's all about the habit. The habit is crucial. How will bonds pay out uh, possible on national debt? Well, any national debt. So if a, comp if, a, if, a, if a government raises money, it has to be repaid. So whether they raise money to, to repay that debt, which is what generally tends to happen because the money's not in the coffers, when money comes due, well, they find the money. Um, and they can, they can also, if they wanted to, print money to be able to repay. Uh, repay the debt. It's it's it, the the system at the moment is completely and utterly unsustainable. It's just it's my literally. If it was personal finance, you would have been bankrupt a long time ago. Like the bailiffs would have been in, they would have cleared in, cleared out your house. You'd be desolate. But because we have instruments available to us, and we've got you know the Bank of England and all this, you know, we can do what we want. We can just print money. That's what tends to happen. This is a really good one. Um, trouble is easy access, a better interest rate than ISIS at the moment. Uh, does that interest you get from chip account um, count towards the £1,000 allowed to earn tax free? Yes, it will. So anything you get in the chip instant access account, um, that return will account towards your personal savings allowance. You're right, though. I mean, most most in, most easy access accounts do pay more than um, your cash ISIS. So the question is, are you going to breach that £1,000 personal savings allowance? If the answer is yes, then maybe you prioritize the ISA because it's tax-free. If not, then you could very, you'll could you be right to just say, actually, you know what, we're going to stick here and, and, and try and get up to your personal savings allowance. Cheers, Carly. Uh, just seeing your recent cash out of video, would you still recommend investing in stocks and shares? And if not, uh, when would you roughly wait till given how everything is at the moment? So look, stocks and shares ICEs are great because of the tax-free nature and the fact that you're invested in the market and it allows you to be able to compound your returns and keep all of it tax-free. That does not negate the fundamentals that I've gone through earlier. You still need to make sure that you have at least five years to invest. You still need to understand why you're investing. You need to understand how you're going to mitigate the risk of investing, making sure you're on an emergency fund, all of these kind of things as your foundation. All of those things are still valid at every moment whether that's when the markets are going badly or whether you're entering a recession or when markets are booming and there is no sight of recession, you still need to make sure you have those fundamental foundations in place. So whether or not it's the right time for you to invest, I can't say. But as if you have those foundations in place, at least you are best positioned to invest in a way that isn't going to be a, a distraction or provide any unnecessary due pressure on your on your finances month to month. Those foundations are so, so important. So again, understanding why you're investing and what you're investing for. Are you investing for a house deposit? Okay, if you're investing for a house deposit, how far into the future is it? If it's less than five years, don't even bother. If you have five years plus, then great. Then understanding, right, how much risk am I willing to take, i.e., 
if you put a thousand pounds into the market right now and you lost 70%, 10%, 20%, 30% of it, is it going to impact your day-to-day finances? Like truly, how are you going to feel about it? You need to ask, you need to answer that question. You also need to understand how you're going to invest. Do you want to, you know, invest in individual stocks, stock pick yourself? Do you want to um, pick some funds or index funds of your own? Do you want to manage it on your own or you just have no appetite to do any of that and would rather just send it off to someone? You need to cross all of those barriers. You need to have an emergency fund in place. You should not be investing if you haven't got, you know, a good control of your budget. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, mm -mm, you should not be investing. (laughs) Not at all. You know, you need to get those foundations in place. If you have those, then you can invest at any given time as long as they're in place. Oh, thanks, guys. Appreciate this. Thank you. Oh, very nice. So where did you go in India? You know what? I've always wanted to go to India, and I've not... I, I, I've been thinking about this a lot this year. I, I, I really, really, really just want to go traveling for, like, I don't know, a month. And just places that are calling me. Japan. I want to go to Japan. I want to go Singapore. I want to go to places like Goa. Um, I just want to get out into that part of the world. I really, really do. Um, it's just the time I want to get back into Switzerland. I actually want to go Switzerland, Austria. I want to get into that part of Europe and like spend some time there and just soak it all in. I really, really want to do that. It's just time. And whilst if push came to shove, I really could do it. I really, really could do it because I think I can still create videos from there. I can upload videos from there. I can do pretty much most of it. I won't be able to do any of the TV work whilst I'm out there. I'd have to put on hold a, a few projects, but I could so do it. And I'm I'm just so... One of my friends got married uh, about three weeks ago and he's Japanese. And um, we had a running joke for his stag dude to go to Japan. I just really want to get out to that side of the country, uh, that side of the world and just explore it because I've never... I've, bit of Thailand and and places like that but I want to I want to spend some time actually traveling that part of the world and just I don't know I guess enrich my soul a little bit who knows we'll see what happens would you recommend topping up a pension or start a stocks and shares I said with expendable cash left over in your budget good question um look you can do both but I think ultimately you kind of so this will be my starting point for you okay if you are in a workplace pension okay and this is if you're employed you need to go and ask about something called matching okay so under auto enrollment which is your workplace scheme at the moment you'll be paying in five percent from you okay there'll be three percent from your employer if they do matching let's just say the amount that you have left over in your your budget is another two percent of your salary okay and you add it to your pension that will mean that now you're paying seven percent into it and if your employer matches they will also pay in seven and with this you're still going to get all of your tax relief as well So I would definitely be asking about your workplace pension first to see if they do this. If they don't, then maybe have a look at, um, I think, what was the other one? The alternative that you mentioned, was it an ISA? Yeah, then look at an ISA. But I would go here first because it's free money. That That extra 4% is free. And you wouldn't get it otherwise. So don't miss out on that. I think that's the first port of call. Uh, Let's get rid of this. One second. (laughs) This this is a good one. The comment for this was government one in the Ponzi scheme. Uh, I wonder how SFB must be feeling. Uh, That's good. I love that, mate. (laughs) Well done. 
In a secret of money, highly recommended watch. Uh, Mark Malone, government printer of money. It's insane. Look, dude, <laughs> like literally, mate. And this is where, so I was having this conversation with uh, one of my old colleagues who was the investment manager talking about um, uh, central bank digital currencies. And we we're talking about ha what would need to happen for those things to work. And mate, it would be a full reset. I mean, the implications are so, so, so far reaching. It's mad. But it it would kind of put an end to this, this situation that we're in where we owe trillions and trillions and trillions. And guess what? Well, it's never going to be paid off. We'll just print more money. I mean, that's what the estates are going to be doing soon when they get around to revising their budget. They'll raise the debt ceiling. Guess what? They're going to print more money. It's mad. It's absolutely crazy. Ah, see, Goa. I want to go to Goa. Definitely want to go to Goa, man. Mm. Now, nah, for a lot of the stuff that I do, I wouldn't be able to do it virtually. Um, you have to be there in person, really. Um, you need to be in studio because it's just, it's a different, because normally you have rehearsals and stuff like that. You can't do rehearsals down the line. So on Thursdays, if you watch me on Pack Lunch, like the, the show's only, what, about two hours long, but I'm there in the morning putting all the finishing touches to the segment. We do rehearsals, we do pre-recordings for some sections. So you can't do that whilst you're, your way you can't do it, you can't do it virtually this is a good question i can't give you an answer on this because i don't know i've not actually followed this story at all it's popped up on my news feed a little bit but i've not actually delved into what's going on there so i can't give you a comment i'll look into it though and try and answer you on the next one Yeah, I will try to. Um, we're looking at April at the moment, try to get away for April for like a week. Um, and then, yeah, I'll see if I can take some extended time off that and just, yeah, do a little bit of traveling. Who knows? I say this now and I'll probably be on a live in April and people are like, I thought you said you were going to go for like a little bit of traveling. I, I'm acutely aware that that is definitely a possibility because my diary, to be fair, is already being booked up into, into April already. I've got things in there for May already so my diary is pretty mad at, the, at this point all right okay cool guys um all right let's just have a look at this one uh reits uh, have higher dividend yields would you say uh, you are better off with these if you don't reach the yearly capital gains threshold anyway also if you buy reits in stocks and shares which i think it is in his stars, it means a couple of games, which is not included. Uh, off the top of my head, I'll need to check that. The dividends in a REIT, well, the rental income has to be paid to the holders of the REIT, essentially. So, a couple of games thresholds are coming down in April. He's gone from 12,300, it's going under 6K then next year is going to go down to 3K, so it's being decimated. So in terms of capital gains, I'm not sure that you'll be in a better place because you're talking about dividends here. Were you talking about dividends? Hang on a second. Let's... Capital, no, you're talking about capital gains. So you will have a capital gains because the rental in the the rental income has to, majority of it has to be paid out to the REIT holders, essentially. So you're going to have a capital gain. And with capital gains being decimated over the next two tax years, you are going to have a, a tax take if you, and this is where tax take by the government, right? If you get a really good REIT that is off, that is paid a really, really good rate, your capital gains is going to be high. You're going to pay more tax on it. So this is where you need an accountant. This is where hopefully you've invested in a ton of things that helps you manage that as much as possible. But there you go. All right. Okay. That's it. I'm going to call this a night because one hour, 28 minutes on the clock. Guys, thank you so much for your attendance this evening. I really do appreciate you. Thank you. Um, if you're watching this on replay and you made it this far, you're an absolute legend. Thank you. Um, and thank you to the 17 of you who have looked at the book. I really do appreciate it. I will talk a little bit more about this over the next week or so. Um, 
everything really centers around this really for the next week. And one thing that I'm not very good at is asking people for favors, asking people to do things. But this is my one chance and probably the only chance that I'm going to have to ask you guys to participate and help me make something happen. So I really want to get this book into as many people's hands as possible. Um, there's a lot of hard work that went into it. I share a lot of stuff that maybe you've not even heard on the channel in this book. And um, I know it's going to help people. It's pretty much the formula that has got me to the point where I am right now. And um, if you haven't ordered your copy just yet, please order your copy. Like I said, the target is to get to the Sudetans bestsellers list. We need 3,000 pre-orders of this physical book in order to make that happen. It is a very, very big, hairy, audacious goal. I don't have any control over it, which is what drives me absolutely nuts um, because I can't I can't influence people taking action. Yes, there's a plan from a social media point of view to market this a little bit more, but really the, the, the deciding factor is down to you who watch, to you who listen. Um, and so I'm just hoping that you will take action for me. But I thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your support. Um, I will have a video out on Tuesday. And um, yeah, guys, thank you so much. Enjoy, enjoy your week whatever it is that you do. Cheers.